So not BMW, not Audi, not even Mercedes, but it's Jaguar first out of the gate with an electric car out of Europe, taking on Tesla. Um, Rick, this is a highly anticipated model. I'm excited about it. What are your thoughts on it? Highly anticipated by some car geeks like you. Electrics are still less than 1% market share. But yeah, this is an exciting course in the market and this could be, I don't know, 20% of the market share in a decade or two. But sure, it's exciting. Uh, it's really only the second electric crossover after the Tesla Model X. And that car has been out for a while, so it does seem like it's the right vehicle at the right time because that's what people want to buy. Well, I'm excited. Let's hop in. Let's drive it. I hope the braking is good for all these people who <laughs> jump out in the street here in New York. I think it's a nice compromise between like Tesla's like grand vision of just a huge slab of glass. Mm -hmm. This is a the Touch Pro Duo system they're calling. It's got two different, you got your audio, your, your main head unit here, and then you have the, your climate control here. It's a good setup. Yeah, two different works. screens. It mm -hmm. makes it just makes it easy to find mm -hmm. stuff, which mm -hmm. is what you want when you're yeah. supposed to be looking that way. You spent the weekend driving this around. What's the driving dynamic? Jaguar says they want to make it sporty. It really is. I mean, we're talking about the equivalent of 394 horsepower and over 500 pound-feet of torque. I mean, this car can move. It can move fast, and and especially when it's from you know zero to 30, zero to 40. You're just um, jumping out ahead of all the traffic. Yeah, darting around the city is fantastic. The car's got a small footprint. We've noticed that. It but, is actually compact, and yep. it can have a smaller overall body without a smaller cabin because there's no engine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I can't even see the hood. We should always point out we're not driving the base model. Yeah. I mean, look, it's $90,000 when it's all done. It starts off. at 70, mm -hmm. and you do get the same uh, powertrain yep. regardless of the trim line. So that's not part of the option package. You're not getting less power or anything like that. It's the right. same. What do um, we get for 90000 that you don't get at seventy? You do get their Jaguar's full suite of that cruise control, the blind spot monitoring, the cross-traffic alerts and things like that. Does it include a baby stroller alert for this <laughs> lady who's about to push her baby stroller in front of us? And there she goes. Uh, it should. So we have to make the inevitable comparisons between other electrics and Tesla, right? Yep. Yep. So we know from having tested the Model 3, which is Tesla's latest, that is a different experience when you get into the car. It's kind of between stepping into a giant smartphone and an automobile. And by the way, weird with the gullwing doors that you can't open in a garage. <laughs> Minor design flaw. So at any rate, this car bests the Model X on acceleration. You ready to see this, Rick? <laughs> I mean, your head just gets pinned yeah, back, doesn't it? Rook, I want, I want to get you in the seat of this car because whenever I get in to see an electric car, especially one like this, I feel like it's the future. And I wonder to myself, why do, why do people drive on gas engines and transmissions and it's loud and it's you know, all kinds of spinning parts? We have more and more charge point stations and things like that popping up. Like it's a dish car in 45 minutes and get an 80% charge. So you get a gra grab a bite, you know, have a cup of coffee, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how long do you have to wait for the guy in front of you? <laughs> I mean, seriously, the more people who have electrics, the longer the line at that charging spot. Well, you know what? Spot. You're right. I mean, there's two charging points in my apartment, and I had to charge the car up last night for this test, and I was concerned what if there's two cars in there that are using the two charging points? And doing it overnight. What am I supposed to do? Running an extension cord from your bathroom. <laughs> All right, let's hop out here. Punch it, Rick. Yeah. We're not even in dynamic mode right now. You know what else? Great acceleration, but also incredibly smooth. Yeah, yeah, it's like, so just linear, right? Straight line acceleration. Yeah, Jaguar really did a good job with keeping it as a sporty. This is a sporty car. It is yeah. definitely not a hyper miler type thing. It's a regen, one pedal driving. Yeah, so you almost don't need to put the brake on except for emergency braking. Mm -hmm. so you and I are a fan of that. We've talked about that before. Once you get used to it, you, you wish every car was like you that. You really do. It's just Because so it easy. saves work. Yeah, and the car is regenerating power from the spinning right. wheels. It's win-win. Okay, we have to talk about the nomenclature for these vehicles at Jaguar. I have a bone to pick with Jaguar because why would you have a car called the E-Pace and not be an electric car? The I-Pace is the electric one. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know if it's I for interactive or 
I for like, you know, the I car, like an Apple nomenclature. I have no idea. I don't get it at all. What, what does the I stand for? What does the E stand for in the other pace? <laughs> the F pace is their biggest SUV. What does right? the F stand for? The E letters E and F have some sort of that's Jaguar. All, yeah. Those are Jaguar yeah. letters. Exactly. But yeah. they call it E400. E B400. That's because the 400 represents the horsepower, but it doesn't. This car, the naming of this car is all wrong. Jaguar, come on, guys. We we expect more from we get more precision from the British. Let me tell you, Rick. My final thoughts are: I I'm a big fan of this car. I think it's gonna it's a huge difference maker for Jaguar as a brand. Yeah, I'll buy that. And they have to stretch. Yeah. You know, they have to stretch on design. They have to stretch on performance. So we have the same questions as always, mm -hmm. which is, what about the price? Tell you what, if you were somebody who was thinking about a Tesla and you just didn't know, maybe you question the viability of the company, mm -hmm. but you have the money, this is the car to buy. You know, I'm, tell I'm telling you the technology is going to change. It's going to be a lot quicker to do these things. Cross Subramanian, the profit of technology. <laughs> You're gonna call me a, I'm a futurist, okay?